Hey, what's up, everybody? Doug Lane, Fast Lane Car Care. Um, I've got a bunch of videos on how to do roll ups. I've got a bunch of videos on how to do back windows, stuff like that. But something I've only covered a couple of times is how to do a windshield strip. And a lot of people ask about how we do these. Uh, so I'm going to show you. So, one of the questions we get a lot is how we cut this perfectly straight line. Uh, I want to spoil it for you. It is the factory edge of the film, so it's the straight edge of the roll. But because of the curvature of the glass, it looks curved. Now this isn't exactly where it's going to go. We haven't measured it out or anything. If you watched the last video, uh, we basically just cut the excess off of our back window, right? And this is what we're left with for a strip. Uh, it's going to go down a little bit lower. But first off, on this particular Hyundai Elantra, we have some kind of a sensor. I'm not really sure what it is, but this little plastic cover goes up here. Uh, you literally just kind of gently pry it off and put it somewhere safe. I like to put it in either the cup holders or the cubbies or whatever. And now secondly, on this particular model, we have a T20. See out there, T20 Torx. Torx screw up here. You don't have to take it all the way out. You're literally just gonna loosen it a couple of notches. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, so this little guy, let's see, let me see if we can show you that. Uh, it needs to slide down and then come down out, okay? So now, we're, we're really just slid it, slid it down. That way we can slide our mirror. Oh, maybe. This thing's making me look stupid. Okay. Give that just one more little turn there. There we go. Now, if you didn't see how I did that, I just slid this little plastic piece. Of course, now it's not gonna want to slide. I just slid it up. Got a little uh, electrical connector. You just want to push down on the little tab. It's kind of like a GM style. Well, <clears throat> got a pick. Let's see. We we're going to need it anyway for the other connector. So are we lifting up here? Yeah, probably. Or is it down here? Yep, there it is. So, as you just saw, this connector kind of fooled me. But this little guy here, like I just showed you, it clips on like this and then it slides up or down. I don't want to break it, but it slides up or down like that. Uh, and so you're basically just going to push it all the way down and that's going to create enough space for you to get these two little tabs out of there and off the glass. So I'm going to sit it in the back seat. Now let's take a little look at this little clip here so it looks like we just push it down maybe push it down push it out uh, let's see yeah uh, here's the deal i want to do it without stabbing my finger because these picks are real sharp come on little buddy Well, I'll be. You gotta be able to push that up and out. 
let's get yet another tool. I don't like leaving picks in the car because they have a great tendency to poke holes in things. Especially if you're not paying attention. So push that down. Maybe push that with my fingers. And then... Um, We were on to something, it clicked. Ah. Body. What are we doing wrong here? Hmm. Well, it's just about to get cut around. I don't really like to do that because it just, I don't know, I just feel like it's not as clean. So let's grab. Let's see. Superb. Push this down and out. Hmm. Yeah, I think these little tabs end up going underneath it. There we go. Yep, that's exactly what it was. I'm just gonna push that down. And I only stabbed my finger with this screwdriver, so that's cool. <clears throat> and I just did that so I can basically cut out a square here on this border. And uh, now the video is 15 minutes longer than what it should be. But that's how you do that. Oh, we're bleeding. So, get some dash protection here. Could use my soap rope, but I uh, really don't need to. Because... These little buddies right here will do just fine. So, here's what we're gonna do with this. Perfect. That's just uh, house wrap tape, Tyvek tape, tuck tape, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is pretty overkill. Normally I just use my one sun distributing dash towel. However, I'm gonna keep talking about it. Um, it is currently at home in the washer. Well, actually it's probably in the dryer right now, but still, either way, we don't have it here. So one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wet shrink this simply because, uh, man, it seems like the dryer sheet works great, but what happens is, if once the dryer sheet dries, it like doesn't wanna stick to the windshield, and then the, the film that is doesn't wanna stick, and then it just makes it more difficult to do what you wanna do. So what we're gonna do, measure that, we're gonna call that 10 and an eighth. Uh, let's grab a different towel. One of these days, one of these days, I'll like 
really sit down and think about the videos and uh, you know plan everything out and make sure that I have everything ready to go that day is not today so here we go we got a Milwaukee marker here and we said 10 and an eighth right but it was just slightly more than 10 and an eighth so right there now this will come this will come right off the glass no big deal you programming people will recognize that so right there's our line there now we got that big finger right there that's not going to be a big deal now So we know this is in the exact spot that we wanted it because that's what we pulled our reference from. Oh no, there's too much moisture. So we will have to double check that in a second. So there is a possibility. Yep, it did shift. So what we're gonna do is that right there. We know we're gonna be pretty much spot on. That 10 and 8 perfect. So now, take our felt bondo card, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to cut this trash off. I've said it in other videos. It seems like whenever I have film overlapping the paint, I get in trouble. It just doesn't want to shrink right, whatever. Could just be me. Could be operator error. Let's confirm. 10 and 1 8 just over top of it. Alright. That's why I love these uh, Milwaukee markers. I think they're way better than Sharpies. But here's what we're going to do. What you need to do. No matter what windshield it is or whatever. You need to measure from the same spot. So you can't measure here and come down. Right, you need to say, okay, we're right here in the rain channel. That's what I like to do. Come straight down. You know, where does your dot matrix and your film, where's that all land? I can get these within like a 64th of an inch, um, which is pretty dang good. The big name local tent shop here, uh, they shoot for one inch. That's what they told one of their customers. One inch. They said, we ain't fixing it unless it's more than an inch out. I thought, an inch? Good Lord have mercy. But, uh, you know, whatever. That's the way they want to do things. I'm going to put that right there. Now, push that. Push that wrinkle out. Now, that little, that little guy right there, we shrink that out. No problem. So, I want to anchor down my edge. Boom. Same deal. That's a carbon blade, we don't want to cut on glass with that. Now, some windows, you're not gonna have this luxury, but we have uh, easily, well, let's just measure it. We have, from the paint to the dot matrix, we've got an inch and three eighths. So we have plenty of room. We can do one of these deals, doesn't matter. Not a big deal. Now I'm wet shrinking it. Uh, if you're new, you probably don't want to try this. It can be tricky. I've, I I don't like wet shrinking back windows, but I don't mind wet shrinking uh, strips. I find it's actually faster for me. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it just seems to be. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the middle the middle of the glass and the middle of the strip. And I'm gonna kinda of, kinda of do one of these. I'm trying to shrink about three inches right here in the middle. So I can basically do like a miniature H pattern. Now wet shrinking is gonna take a little bit longer because the water is gonna keep the film cool. 
while you're trying to shrink it. So you can get yourself into trouble with that if you're new, sitting there with the heat in one spot and then it starts melting or burning. Now you can see every time I'm doing this, moisture's coming out. That's what you want. Once the moisture starts coming out, it's gonna shrink faster. Now what I just did right there is I just dried that out so I can take my marker here, make myself a nice little line. Now I'm going to go around to the other side, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Here's this bigger uh, finger right here, but it's not going to be any problem. Same thing. I'm just gonna touch up our line right there. If you haven't figured out what we're going to use that line for yet, you're in luck. You know what? Might as well bring this back over with me. One of these days might be cool and have uh, like extension cords. You know what I mean? Have them just on the reel. And then that way you have a heat gun on each side and you don't have to search for one or drag it around, but that day's not the day, so work with what we got. So spin this around here. I love this Milwaukee light because you can fit it in so many different places and do so many different things with it. something like that I think yeah that ought to work snap a blade the trickiest part about this whole situation is gonna be this and this we have a border but it's very faint we don't have much to work around Now, you could use glass aid, or I've seen some people use pinstripe tape. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I've never scratched glass with a stainless blade. Uh, I don't think ever. My thing is, use a clean tip, you know, snap your blade every once in a while, uh, and 
you're not pushing super hard you're just like i have most of my pressure back here this is just gliding across basically it's not cutting down through the film you push it in and then drag it if that makes sense so you're just cutting through and then you're just pulling it see how it cuts like that I mean that's the best way I can explain how you're doing it now yeah if you're putting a lot of pressure on it or you got your angle up like that yeah you can, you can scratch it with a stainless blade but look at my house wrap tape all right so we have very very little room for error here now the good news is this is on this dot matrix so if we do get just a little bit of a gap it's really not going to be a huge deal in the grand scheme of things but i don't like it so try to make it as perfect as i can all right okay I mean, it's not pretty, but that'll work. So now, same deal with this. Connect my dots. Now the big question that I have, let's go ahead and snap another blade, just in case we have to do some trimming inside. Here's my question. Yes, that was it. So you could probably see the shadow of this connector right here. And I was hoping that it is exactly how it is. The connector is raised up off the glass. So we got our straight cut there. We shouldn't have to trim anything. But just in case we have a nice clean blade, we can reach up there and do that. Oh, man. The worst thing about using these lights is they're so bright. They're so bright, man. They uh, they kind of temporarily blind you. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Ugh. I'd like to get this thing done by roughly noon. That's what I'm shooting for, but we'll see. So we got, let's see, eight, ten, wait, one, two, three, six. Six windows after this. The <coughs> same as the way I prep my back window. Scuff up your dot matrix a little bit. Steel wool. Don't spray whatever sensor that is directly. And don't spray water into the connectors. If you really want to, you could wrap this with house tape, house wrap tape. I mean, you could use masking tape too, but it would just fall apart. Something else I don't really talk about. When you're doing this, you're also trying to feel for any contamination in the glass. So like sometimes you'll have a windshield that has like a speck of tar or something on it. Something crazy, so. You want to make sure uh, that you're feeling for any rough spots that uh, that thing's gonna grab a hold of. You could use your hand too, but I just don't like to because I, don't, I just don't want to. I don't wanna use my hand. 99% of the time I can feel it catch on my SOS or my, uh, my scrub pad whichever one of these I use. I can generally feel it. Now, come in 
here with the hybrid. Clean this up. Tell you what, the Orange Crush is another good squeegee that I like. I enjoy it. But I think that I just think the hybrid is a little bit better. At first, I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it not being cropped or beveled or whatever you want to call it, or the ends are like that. <coughs> but uh, so far, works just fine. Same deal with like the back windows. Spray it and let it settle. Any dust that's between us. will settle down and uh, hit the release liner so that way when you pull that up it's not falling into your work it's one of those little tips I picked up uh, I saw this crazy like Russian guy tinting windows on YouTube and uh, okay come on there we go he was just going crazy, man, with the moisture. He was like, just, you know, just, just soaking just everywhere. I was like, what is this dude doing? Well, then the crazy thing was he did the same thing after he pulled the release liner. So he went to Frankenstein it, but he just like, you know, just yanked the release liner off. It was like, up in the air. I thought, dude, you've got to get a lot of, uh, a lot of contamination in there like it just you have to when you're spraying moisture up that high there's got to be dust up there coming down in your work but yeah I don't know this is as far as I reverse roll most of the time you know what let's just try to do it like all the way boom 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 okay good enough Let's see. This is my problem with reverse rolling. There we go, that might work. Oop. Oop. Dang, that's pretty close. There. Uh, let's pull that that way. There on that line. That was pretty much on that line. That's why we drew our lines. See how we're just barely sitting on them? That's exactly how we had them out there. We've got no gaps. Everything is perfectly how we had it earlier. And now, I'm going to take my little Fusion Turbo and push this middle out. I find that if you start from the middle and work out on these, it's a lot easier because what can sometimes happen is you'll get a little spot, a little finger or something in here, and you've already tacked all this down so you can't really do anything with it except for try to shrink it. And sometimes that works and sometimes that does not work. So I like to start in the dead center and work out. Like to push out on this dot matrix stuff a bit. I find usually just going up or down is about the best, but you're never going to get all that out. Hard pass. Now, take our whatever tool we grab. We'll take a reflex. We're just going to try to push down this outside edge. Just to get any moisture that might be hanging out, keep it from sucking back in. Clean up any messes. I like to wipe down my top edge. That way the moisture gets down in there. I'm gonna kind of soak up my sensors too. 
sometimes what can happen if you don't wait down this top edge is you know it'll start to seep back in there and that's not good wait down our inside of our glass paying special attention not to hit this like you don't want to go up and down with it if you are going to touch it just go across you'll have a lot better success that way because uh, you can pull your film up uh, if you're going up and down so I like to just kind of go across one time kind of get any moisture that's hanging out there this isn't really a final clean I'm just wanting to get the moisture off of there so it keeps it from going back down in behind the dash it's the whole point use a soak rope but I also don't want water spots and soap streaks and all that good stuff so So if you're wondering like about the Windex coming off of there, or the Windex, the Sharpie marks, uh, just this is just straight up Windex, gone. So this is how you do a single piece uh, windshield strip. You can also, like if you had a camera or whatever here, a lot of times you can do a two piece strip. And in that case, I would just use the extras the scrap off of the um, the front doors when I cut them. I'll use the overhang off of that because I use 24 inch rolls. With that we got just a little bit of something here so we can come across that and heat up. That, that This usually happens uh, when you're getting towards the end of a roll. I don't know exactly why. I just seem to notice it. It's like the edge just doesn't want to quite lay down. So what I'll do is just leave it. Hello world, see it's gone. I'll leave that, let it dry some, and then before I ship this out, I'll come back and uh, push it down with either a hard card or come across it with that fusion squeegee, the hybrid, and you know, just knock it down. We could sit here and keep pushing and pushing and pushing on it, but it's not gonna do any good because it, the glue's not quite you know, ready. We could heat it up and do that, um, but the more we fidget around and mess with it, the more risk we have scratching it and being on the front windshield. You know, customers are gonna see that every day. So I'd rather just wait for this to dry, do the rest of the car, and then come back, and if we have to use a heat gun, just kiss it with a little bit of heat, push it down, be good to go. There you go, perfectly even. We measured it. It's gonna be, you know, within a 64th or so. Um, another thing to consider if this has aftermarket glass, which this does not, you can see the Hyundai logo. But let's say they had the windshield replaced. Sometimes these windshields can be slightly off. They can be off-centered. They can be up or down a little bit. Um, you can have glue, the uh, silicone they use, it can be squeezed out on the glass. So take a note when you're doing one of these cars or any car uh take note of the windshield if you're gonna do a strip it's got a rock chip in it it's been filled um take note of the windshield and then inspect the inside before you start cutting because nothing is worse than having your pattern cut get it in here and then finding out this edge won't lay down and then you got to cut silicone out hope that you don't pull a bunch of trash into your film and it's not fun so it's easier just to take take quick note uh, look on the inside and everything and get it squared away. But that's all I got for you guys. Doug Lane, Fast Lane Car Care. Single piece windshield strip. That's how you do it start to finish.